Uh, good day, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, okay, I'm back again. I've been asked this question by someone. They asked me, like, how would we solve something like this? So the question reads, two charges attract each other with a force of 1.5 newtons. What will be the force if the distance between them is reduced to a quarter of its original value? Okay, uh, so here we have put two charges. Let's say this charge here and this charge over there. We'll call this charge Q1 and this Q2. And it said they have got like a distance that we can call R that's separating them. And now they're saying if we reduce the distance between these two charges, what's going to happen? So if we reduce the distance, we expect probably to have Q1 here and Q2 here. So our Q1 will be here and our Q2 will be here. And then we would have reduced the distance. So they're saying the distance is going to be reduced by a quarter. So the new distance between them will be R over 4. That's what is going to be our new distance. So we want to find out what's going to happen. So they said uh, the F initially it's 1.5 from the question. It's 1.5. So we want to find F after the distance between them has been reduced. Okay, so let's use the information that we have to try and figure out what we can do. So we, we all know that if we are calculating the forces that are acting on two particles, we use the Coulomb's law. And the Coulomb's law simply says uh, F is equal to uh, K Q1 Q2 all over R squared. This is the Coulomb's law. So according to the information that we are given there, which says two charges attract each other with a force of 1.5 newtons. So it means we are given the force of attraction before the distance has been reduced and it's said to be equal to 1.5. So we can just simply come and equate this to 1.5 like this. So what it means is that F is equal to 1.5. But for you to be able to calculate this, you would have used um, these um, given values of Q and K and R. Now, let's try to zoom into this minor situation here. After we have reduced the, the distance, let's try to calculate the force for that particular situation. So for us to be able now to calculate the force, uh, what we have to do, our F is going to be equal to K, Q1 over Q2 over the value of R Remember, we have reduced the distance, which means our R is no longer R. It's now R over 4. So we'll put our R over 4 here. But from the formula, you have to square the distance, which we are doing now. Okay, like this. So if we simplify this, we'll have K, Q1, Q2, all over. If we take this square inside, we'll have R squared divided by 16, like this. If we further simplify this, you know if you are dividing a fraction by a fraction, you have to invent, right? So we have K, Q1 over Q2 over R squared. This 16, since we are inventing, it becomes a numerator. So you have 16 here, like this. So let's call this F1, the normal force. And then let's call the force after reducing the distance, F2. So we have got the value of F2 being this. But what do we know? From this information here, we know that F is equal to this, which is also equal to this. So why can't we take, since this is equal to what we have here, somewhere here, you can all agree with me. And the same thing that I've circled here, it's said to be equal to what's there, as you can see. So we can simply substitute all that thing that's in the circle by 1.5 because it is said that F is equal to 1.5 on top there. So let's simply do that. So we have to say is equal to, in place of all that, we'll put 1.5. So this time around, our 1.5 is multiplying 16. So our F is going to be 15 multiplied so 1.5 multiplied by 16 and that will give you the new force 
that you need, which is your F2. The force that you will get after you've reduced the distance. Mind you, uh, when you reduce the distance, you expect the force to get bigger. When you increase the distance between the particles, you expect the force to become smaller and smaller. Yeah, let me know if you didn't understand. Thank you.